to entice one into a mood, a form of mesmerism and enchantment. It keeps you from being able to focus on the lyrics, which are often being delivered in such a way that it makes it even harder to tell what is exactly being said anyway. But this state of hypnosis, or partial unknowing, or confusion, is a key part of creating duality in the minds of both the performer and the audience. The person listening or watching takes the dual meanings of the song into the brain, one into the conscious mind, and the other into the subconscious. The conscious mind believes whatever you want it to. The subconscious mind, however, sees the reality of what is there and feels the intention of a thing, producing diverse neurological responses throughout the body and mind. These impulses cause changes in behavior, thought, and personality. This is half of the goal of Project Janus. Once a personality becomes tapped for division, the other half, is to now cause that new personality to itself become heavily possessed. The warlock scientists of Project Janus incorporated occult practices into their day jobs, as do most devout Luciferians, those who view Lucifer as God. The goal, as was demonstrated by the reported work of Hitler's specialized top Nazi scientists, the shared goal of Adolf Hitler, his scientists, and now obviously the CIA, was to create a mind-controlled robotic soldier, hollowed out like a shell, devoid of all traces of who they really are. The mind control experiment victim is then filled up by ritual with a demonic entity, fallen one or disembodied spirit. The possessed side of the Janus, or genus, genus, gen, dominates the whole person in time. So with some background info provided for your trip, we enter the mind control program, Project Janice, as we explore our favorite R&B jams, and I do mean the jams, and dig into a phenomenon well documented by rock and roll fans and conspiracy theorists alike, which language. We will apply its principles to some of the best of R&B, rhythm and blues, that old music, soul music. You see, which language is but a loose term used to describe the songwriter's spell. The so-called spell is achieved by way of the listener's assumptions. The assumption is that the song is about a man, or about a woman, or about love. All are illusions cleverly cast by the songwriter in order to keep the great Luciferian secret a secret. Songs are designed in reference and reverence to the spirit realm and the one which they believe in. Some become noited by their new angelic addiction and sing in awe of its power and ability. Some become annoyed by the constant conditions, contradictions, and controls that come along with this new religion, one that they were promised would set them free. And some songwriters feed Lucifer their energy of regret, sorrow, and pain because this is indeed his pleasure principle, but he is the principle of pleasure. So let's prepare to go back to school, sit back, relax, and focus your third eye. Remain open-minded to the possibilities that life is much deeper than we are all conditioned to normally see. Assume for a minute that the unity of the elite is based upon this secret spirit worship that they share. Imagine that the business of music that we grew up on and assumed was all about talent and its exposure is in reality another vehicle used by our hidden rulers and their court magicians in order to skew our views about men, women, love, life, and God. We now start off our journey with two of R&B's most successful songwriting stars, Ashford and Simpson who had their start on the notorious Scepter and Wand label, as did The Whispers and Tammy Terrell, who will all be touched upon in this piece. This is It Seems to Hang On, and without any preconceived idea of what the song means or what people say it means, use your logical mind and you will break the spell as you listen carefully. You will discover what the it they're referring to really is.
Now, people don't get angry with me. Now, let's just back it up a little bit. This just so happened to be the first song I realized this dual meaning phenomenon in. I wasn't listening to it for that reason. I was jamming. But once the light of the Lord is on you, all things done in the darkness seem to come to light with little or no prompting. I couldn't deny the direct biblical references they call out to Jesus using his terminology, loose me. The way of these secret practices involves secrecy and deception, hence the planting of the question, is it love at the end? More Project Janus duality. They mean the reverse of the word love, both phonetically and philosophically. E-V-O-L, evil. Love of the material world, which is why our poor brothers and sisters often leave the church, leave gospel, as did Ashford and Simpson, who joined Motown in 1966, the occult year one, in search of what is seen to be a better life in this world. Some say this is what a fool believes, that Lucifer is God and will one day return from Eve's past and take his place in her life as king, ruling even over her not yet created children. Enter master songwriter, lyricist, Grammy award-winning, blue-eyed soul wizard of crossover, Michael McDonald. He sings of the devil's deception and conception with Eve, another secret kept among students of the occult. Check out the life of Adam and Eve as told in the Apocrypha or lost books of the Bible. And check out this Doobie Brothers joint.
He shows and proves his creativity by developing song lyrics that sound like a catchy little love ditty until the top layer, like an onion, is removed, revealing yet more skin. And rotting deeper beneath is a meaning pertaining to the Lucifer worship and spiritual worship of his chosen profession's religion. Remember, this religion goes back to Babylon with the worship of the sex magic goddess queen Semiramis, the queen of the night, the model for the Statue of Liberty in truth. It is another clever disguise for Lucifer worship, 